when apartments are shrinking, mm -hmm. then public realm needs to increase. Mm -hmm. You can't shrink everything. Mm -hmm. uh, we people need the places to kind of do what we enjoy doing. And, mm -hmm. and so it's, it's a balance and it's about, the question should be about how do I increase a higher quality of life? Mm -hmm. uh, and that could actually be in having smaller bedrooms. <laughs> We've seen Bjarke Engels design studio today, one of the most famous architects of, uh, yeah, I think our generation. And now it's gone. <laughs> See inside. Um, actually, he just brought out a Netflix series on, uh, I think it's called Abstract. Uh, look for that. It was really good. Also, the one with Platon was really good. Nice to meet you, Kai. Yeah, pleasure. Greetings. Likewise. <laughs> so your German's still really, really good. Yeah, I just I try, tried field centered. Yeah, we were wondering. I was, I was um, asking Nurida actually if he could bring anything from Germany, but then yeah. you moved away when you were very little, so you probably I don't. I was six. Yeah, so you don't even like. I, I mean, I speak like a six-year-old. So if you want to have a. I don't speak different. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> good. Good. Yeah. So I think that's what we're interested in: just finding out how you work here. Yes. Um, because you're pioneering, of yep. course. So we are, of course, uh, a Danish Scandinavian architecture office with offices in Copenhagen, London, and in New York. Yeah. We're about uh, 500 plus architects. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, the New York and the Copenhagen office are about equally sized. Mm -hmm. uh, so we came to America seven years ago yeah. uh, through a project called the VIA Project. Yeah. Uh, that's not workspace, it was uh, kind of a, a residential project, uh, but also with retail. In New York, you kind of always mix uses. I think uh, one of the things that I learned when I think about Germany or also a very European kind of context is that you build a building as monofunctional. This is a bureau house mm -hmm. or an office house. This is a residential house. Sounds quite German. Yes. And there's not the kind of masala mix or Blending the in yeah 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 there's like not the 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 excitement that actually taking different programs and putting them together mm -hmm. that you see in a city like New York. Mm -hmm. So you can go up to the tenth floor and suddenly there's a swimming pool, or mm -hmm. you go up another couple of floors and it's actually a sky lobby, and and then you know there's a hotel at the top. It's a bit so limitless. It, it's 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 really refreshing yeah. when you think of building a building that offers basically uh, uh, the life of the city in a building. And I think that the WeWork uh, idea is actually how to think of this complexity that is life and actually start to uh, put that all together in a building. So that's why they're getting into education. Yeah. So we designed the WeGrow school uh, for them. Didn't know that, yeah. The, they are into co-living, co-working, oh, yeah, no, that. Uh, markets so that you can go shopping and, and uh, get your groceries. So it's, it's about how to design uh, the life that you want to lead yeah. and raise in a way a quality of life uh, instead of running from one mono uh, programmed to building the to the one. next. Yeah. Because then you're, you're spending a lot of time running from one to the next. So I think in the future, one of the things that I think we have taken away where we work is actually teaching us is how to uh, find joy in complexity and that that is a good thing and that these things all together also make for an exciting kind of uh, lobby uh, and, and space. So in terms of complexity this seems so like the workspace here seems yeah. really simple but then again also really yeah, so our own workspace, we moved here, this is Dumbo, yeah. so uh, we just outside have the Brooklyn Bridge Park. Uh, this is a 100-year-old uh, building. Uh, the inventor of the cardboard box Are you kidding me? is in this building Oh wow! 100 years nice. ago or 120 years ago. He built a, a series of about six to seven buildings, yeah. and uh, that's what these buildings were built for was the production, production the and box. the warehousing of cardboard boxes. Yeah. So that, of course, moved out. Yeah. Other people moved in. For about 20 years, it was actually unoccupied. Yeah. And then about 15, 20 years ago, they're being repurposed. Yeah. And so some of them are uh, commercial spaces like this. 
beautiful ceiling heights. You have the light uh, going up, uh, coming in from the inside, from the outside, and then others are residential projects. So we just moved here like six months ago, and we love it. What do you love about it? We love it. it you know, in New York, it has a tremendous city life. The the city blocks are quite small. Mm -hmm. They're almost like I think uh, they're massive. <laughs> inspired by uh, Belgian blocks, they're called. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, you have everything down. You have you have grocery stores, yeah. uh, restaurants, uh, the park, and I think it's as much about the majority of our people are coming and living in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and so moving our office from Manhattan to Brooklyn also cuts out like 15 minutes from their commute. Yeah. So suddenly. So was it for the employees? I think it was for all of us, yeah. for sure. And we had we started our office. Uh, we've moved four times in seven years. Oh, wow. I would never suggest that to, for no, anyone. No, no, But uh, we moved uh, we, the we, last... We moved about the same time, and one, but yeah. we were with, uh, what, 20 people? We, we yeah, yeah, handle yeah. it. <laughs> and so we, we just, you know, we decided we don't want to move again. Yeah. Where can we get enough space to kind of future-proof yeah. the office? And that was uh, the that space was in Dumbo. Yeah. So you, when you look around, we can take a walk yeah, if you want. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, uh, what's your favorite spot? Where do you work and what's your favorite spot? Yeah, we, we, we don't have offices, so everyone actually has an equal amount of space, mm -hmm. no matter what they're doing. Um, then we have these meeting rooms that you see here. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, around the inner circle, so we have a, we have a courtyard, mm -hmm. and then around the courtyard we have the meeting that's rooms. Actually, that's actually inside a different yeah. look. So we have... Uh, we have a courtyard, daylight is coming in to yeah. all of the areas. And then we have uh, these glass meeting rooms. And then beyond that, we have the, the, uh, the desk space. We have a very like, large model uh, yeah, workshop. Yeah, we saw that. We saw that on the other side. And uh, nice. do you want to walk through the, the gallery as well? Yeah. So, yeah. so f I think for us, it was to kind of create a space that uh, people could feel welcome in, that there's enough space for them to do their work um, and have the support. Uh, we weren't able to have this much space if we were in Manhattan. On one side here, we have our uh, model uh, storage. And then on this side here, we have our material storage. So uh, yeah. these are, you well, know. Dad used to do these, you know, McLean uh, train yeah, systems. Yeah, uh, exactly. Love it. The trees were, were the same. Exactly. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, Germans love their model trains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. He has a whole thing going on there. Yeah. To somewhere stuck in the basement. Yeah, it's nice. So is this also part of your culture? You keep old things and you learn from it? Like you yeah. always keep on... We, we, we consider this kind of... So we have a very evolutionary design process. We evolve designs. So designs aren't just sort of dead. Mm -hmm. uh, they continue to live on. Mm -hmm. And so we are inspired by the work that we've done. This is only work from the last seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that can actually live on in, uh, in another uh, project or two. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's our way of kind of uh, we call it also an iterative design process, evolutionary uh, design process, where you're continually learning uh, from one to the next iteration. So you were saying um, that we work, um, no, as the we live, of course, and the, yeah. we educate and everything. So where is this whole journey going to? I think that uh, I think that what we work presents is a new type of uh, client. One who is not only interested in building buildings, but building communities. So because a WeWork now owns over 50 buildings in downtown Manhattan, they're now also interested in how all of those buildings are connected. They're now also interested in the public transportation system. They're interested in much larger uh, urban issues because they are now interested in all buildings working at their optimum. If you only have a certain, you know, single kind of uh, buildings that don't necessarily communicate or are not really connected, uh, you may not be interested in those things. Uh, at, at WeWork, you're a member of a community. Right. 
And so you can go from New York to London to Santiago uh, to Shanghai. And as a member, you can use their facilities. You can sleep in their co-living places. You can shop in their Wii markets. So you're, you're suddenly, you have a much larger kind of feeling of what home is. Um, and I think that that will appeal to those kind of, you know, global, trans-global kind of companies. Uh, and for people who actually want to think uh, about keeping a smaller footprint and, and being effective in different places. How do you think the whole digital um, development influences that? Because now that you say it, I get the impression the more complex the world gets on the digital um, side, yep. um, talking about AI, AI, everything, the more simplicity, the more community, the more community maybe, the more um, yeah, so coziness. Screen time versus real yeah, time. Yeah, um, like is I, that, what is your idea on that? I totally think that, uh, that we will seek out social events, social kind of places. And they can be in our homes or maybe they're also out in the city. Uh, so I think when apartments are shrinking, mm -hmm. then public realm needs to increase. Mm -hmm. You can't shrink everything. Mm -hmm. uh, we people need the places to kind of do what we enjoy doing. And, mm -hmm. and so it's, it's a balance and it's about the question should be about how do I increase a higher quality of life? Uh, and that could actually be in having smaller bedrooms mm -hmm. because you only spend a certain number of hours and you don't use them all day long. Mm -hmm. So how can I effectively use a bedroom space and how can I transfer some of that space into other spaces mm -hmm. that then actually have a much more useful uh, kind of... Uh, it's a very good question. I was just thinking of... we have, I don't know if you're familiar with the Hamburger Knochen. You know, the yep. old yeah. uh, apart uh, apartments you get into. You have one, two yes. the rooms, are very classic. Um, and we set up in a very classical room. We have a kitchen, we have a living room, we yep. have a, a dining room, we have a kid's room, we have a parent's room. And I feel like the dining room, for example, we use it like once a year, Christmas on exactly. the 24th. Yeah. So I'm thinking like, get rid of all the chairs, get rid of the tables, so let me, let me sit take on you, the floor. No, no, but uh, imagine now in that same apartment building, the hallway could be increased, mm -hmm. right? And you have a more generous hallway than the usual small hallways, right. dark, uh, possibly. So the, the hallway suddenly can become a social space that during Christmas, everyone brings out their kitchen tables, throws it into one long and has a, a big fest mm -hmm. where it's like all having Christmas lunch at the same time. Nice. And this is actually a building that we've designed okay. in Copenhagen mm -hmm. where we made a kind of balance mm -hmm. uh, with the clients. We said, we're going to save you from doing a corridor on every level. We're yeah, going to do one I every third level. I think level. it was in the Netflix store called. Exactly. It wasn't, it wasn't, yeah. And so yeah. every third level, there's a yeah. hallway. Mm -hmm. But then we said, we're going to make the hallway wider mm -hmm. because we're saving you a bunch of hallway space. Mm -hmm. And the client said, okay, what happens on rainy days? Kids play me. soccer In the inside the hallway. Yeah. And uh, th they're, they're getting to use their bodies and you know, their, their energy, yeah. which on rainy days, kids can go berserk. Yeah. Or, do, you, do you have kids? Uh, I'm having my first child in uh, March. So oh my in God, two months. that is so, and I can yeah, tell yeah. I have two. Yeah. And it's crazy how they open up um, my way of thinking, my, my point of view on things, because I, you know, with my daughter, especially, I tell her, sit still on the chair. She's for turning for sit still on the chair. Don't yeah. move, like, don't play, you know, don't play on the floor. <laughs> um, but it's actually, it's amazing to see how they sit on the floor and they integrate every single piece yeah. that is there. And they just being creative and experience um, physical, um, you know, they build with like wooden thingies. Or and they build a fort, yeah. right? Yeah. Inside a room. Yeah. So that should teach us that when we have a physical space, we could still make little temporary structures and use them in a different way. So just by inheriting the physical place of a hamburger knochel, uh, it doesn't mean that you have to live that way. You can actually start to reimagine how that actually is used. So that the dining room... Get ready, I'm tearing down walls. <laughs> yeah, the dining room suddenly has a much greater purpose yeah. and it can fulfill so many more things. 
uh, in the way that uh, people live. So where do you live? Do you live in Brooklyn as well? I live across the streets live here across in Dumbo. Yeah. So everything is very efficiently on... Uh, it's very. I have a two-minute commute for for New York. That's pretty. Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty nice. short. That's nice. Yeah. That's really short. Yeah, yeah. And you were talking about finding joy earlier. Where do you find joy, except at work? Uh, I think for me, I have a very. Um, you know, I'm 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 very privileged in that. Uh, I'm representing all of our offices, so Copenhagen, London, and here. So I get a chance to actually travel between the different uh, places. Uh, and that helps me make also certain connections between things. Um, I'm also making sure that the people in the different offices feel uh, kind of a real connection. Um, How? I think it's uh, through uh, definitely what we spend a lot of time doing is exchange of information, exchange of knowledge. So every three years we go on a study trip. We just came back from Burning Man. So we took like 230 bigsters, oh, wow. built our own camp, built our own uh, artwork, the orb, yeah. uh, and, uh, and brought it back home again. So that, that, that for us was a, a way to be both creative, uh, but also communal. And then people were coming from the three different offices who had never met each other. And then we're also expected to live together, to work together to enjoy and play together. You're really connected over the different locations. Is that just yeah. the impression that I get or is that really, because it's, I saw the little um, figures in the entrance hall yes. and the screens. And yeah. We try very hard to create that connection between uh, things. So you meet every three years or like with all of you guys? Or? And then in between the three years, there's also the other opportunities. Yeah, there's other opportunities to meet. Yeah, I can imagine it's difficult to bring so Should many people. Should we keep people. going? Yeah, so yeah. bring together so many people. Yeah. So um, March, that is like super exciting. Yes. Um, may I ask what it's going to be? Uh, a you girl. Don't know. A girl. Amalie. Yes. Right here. So this is, uh, you've probably heard. Oh my God, I love it already. This is an important room. I, I call it a room, but it's an important space. We use it for <clears throat> meetings, uh, for lunch, for, we, we have bands play here as well. So, uh, and then what they've done is they built it on a series of buildings. So that's the next building, but it has the same garden. And then uh, the same garden is over there. You know, they, they've done a great job of, of, of kind of providing this connection of yeah. these different buildings yeah. that were all built by the cardboard box. And now there are a lot of creative companies. Mm -hmm. So Vice Media, yeah. they are right down there. there. So that's Vice on that floor. And then they come here for their parties, and then we like have a chance to talk, and it's Throw uh, some beers over. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's incredible. It's such a different. Um, the atmosphere is insanely different. Yeah. Yeah. Than downstairs. So yeah. you have the you have the Manhattan Bridge, and then uh, over here we also have like a little tiny view of the Brooklyn Bridge, and Manhattan. So uh, what do you think? When can I move in? Perfect. <laughs> You're welcome to come in for sure. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, I mean, what, what I love the most is how, um, how different it is downstairs. Yeah. Like you really have this kind of um, focused work atmosphere. And I was wondering where I, I didn't dare to ask. Um, I was wondering where people relax and you know find quiet space and a minute and yeah. then you take us here and it's um, yeah. it's different it's yeah it's green probably in the summer it's absolutely green uh, you know the sun comes out it's always in the sun so I think uh, what we've tried to create downstairs is the space for kind of like the creative process and for us to do our work yeah. uh, because I don't know if you also noticed, uh, you know, we have landscape, yep. uh, we have engineering, yep. architecture and products. So we're- Yeah, we talked to Eric for a bit. We're really interested in, in the kind of holistic approach yeah. of design. Yeah. So it's not only about one or the other, which is very Bauhaus inspired. Bauhaus was Gesamtkunstwerk. Yeah. And uh, for us, um, 
we, we see ourselves actually uh, of being kind of a next generation of creating a holistic Gesamt Kunstwerk. Mm -hmm. We like to design the outside, the inside, the way that the building is connected to the city. And also the community. The community. And that's why also a WeWork client is very interesting because they're asking for the same thing. Yeah. So they allow us as kind of a strategic partner to help them formulate what, what that means. Picture. I'm, I must say, I got lost. Well, we know. We're on the 10th floor. Yeah. So typically, all of the floors are broken up like this. Yeah. You don't have the openness uh, like but we are below. But this is still part of your office here? Is this is not us. No, no, no. We're no. one floor below. So yeah, we, yeah. we walked one floor up. Yeah. So uh, we have the big uh, alphabet lamp. <clears throat> which so is from Artemide. Artemide, same. exactly. So this is one of the products that we design. And when you come into a big office anywhere, you will always be greeted in the same way. Yeah. Uh, you're also greeted with the same furniture. We really like to kind of try out our designs. I that was... You liked I it? Was, yeah. Well, no, to be honest, I hated it because I'm still jet lagged. When I look at okay, it, okay. I can go crazy. But I heard you love it, so I need to ask. Oh, So it's 3.44. Wow. It's a Swedish uh, artist group called Humans Since 1982, mm -hmm. and they are kind of digital uh, information artists. Yeah. So they they're, they're, no, they're looking at kind of uh, like high, uh, you know, high tech, low tech. Yeah. So this is taking analog, you know, system, timekeeping, and then bringing a kind of a digital twist to it. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, now I'll you can you can definitely stare at that for, yeah, for yeah, a long forever. time. Yeah, Yeah. And you know the uh, clients like Google. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, we've we've got seven projects that we're currently doing with Google. Yeah. Another client like WeWork that kind of pushes us to think about what New the ways. future is about. Yeah. Uh, the future what of workspace. What is it about with, with Google? With Google, I think a lot of it is uh, just the. Um, where innovation occurs mm -hmm. is not a person in front of a screen. Mm -hmm. Innovation occurs in interaction. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be a group of eight to ten people. It could be uh, in a hallway, in a stairwell, in the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. So what Google is doing is always kind of reinforcing that kind of social exchange in its architecture, in its placemaking. And uh, so we're we're designing it like a big top tent, like a circus. And then you have all of these like people doing amazing things in that circus tent. Uh, and then all of the support functions like meeting rooms, uh, bathrooms and cafeterias, uh, they are all kind of hidden underneath because what, what it's all about is the people. And the people sort of seeing each other Ah, making that connection of yes, yesterday we had that conversation uh, and then the, again the hallways are wider so that you have the chance to actually sit in the hallway uh, and then there's like, all of these, uh, these meeting places that are informal. Is it already in like modeling or is it in the hidden section? No, it's right over here. We've been working with them for uh, five years. Uh, we developed in, uh, together with Thomas Heatherwick the master plan of Mountain View. And then this is a cutaway model that's showing you, you know, to scale. So these are people. Mm -hmm. There are about 5,000 people working in this uh, tent mm -hmm. structure. Mm -hmm. The spaces that I mentioned below, like the meeting rooms, are underneath. And then you have these kind of areas with stairwells and trees that allow you to sort of move from the top to the bottom. Um, and then it's, it's really about standing here and being able to see every single Yeah, and desk. it still gives you the transparent, the openness, the yeah. transparency. Yeah. A lot of transparency, a lot of daylight. Uh, this is a very different type of, you can see here, it's a very different type of space than what they are used to in, uh, in Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, typically the buildings are like very kind of uh, uh, dark, because they're driven by you know, cheap uh, construction and uh, darkness because they believe that everything's about the screen. So there wasn't a very, there wasn't a high level or quality of uh, space. Uh, what they discovered is that people didn't like being there. Yeah. 
And so now all of the tech companies are in a way designing uh, better places. Do you think there are going to be screens in the future? Oh, of course. Think? I think so. I mean, unless you can start to uh, read off of your body or off of actually, your eyeglasses. In fact, talking about relationships and interaction, yeah. I think, I mean, we're trying to open up spaces to collaborate more, to interact more, yeah. and then we put the screens in front of our faces and in front of, our, yeah, yeah. Um, in front of the people. So I find that quite interesting if that's um, going to disappear. Um, well, things are always in flux. Things are always, I think, changing. Mm. So that's a part of it. Well, we can this in. is a project in Toronto. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are typically projects in Toronto are, of course, sort of glass skyscrapers on top of a, you know, a podium. And what we're proposing with uh, the King Street uh, project is actually kind of a different way of building homes so that you're not just in a glass skyscraper in the air. You literally have all of these outdoor terraces that you can come out it's to. It's so incredibly green. Yeah. It's amazing. So this is a project that's just been approved mm -hmm. and is under construction or will be in, under construction very, very, very soon. When will be, um, when can we take a look at it? We're doing uh, the interior design and uh, we're also doing the architecture on this one. I think move-in is probably like 2022, 23. Um, a project that we've completed, this is in Coconut Grove in uh, Miami. Yeah. So uh, one of the early projects that we've done here in New York, uh, it's a condominium project uh, where we're twisting the buildings to the view. So the, the prevailing view to the beach is over here. Mm -hmm. But then the site was such that we had to sort of place this building here, the one in the back. There needed to be space for a car. So we, uh, we, we had to do that because of the site. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you come around, there's one drop off uh, so that the buildings don't sort of feel separated, but you have sort of one place to drop off. You enter each building and there's also sort of to create a kind of communal aspect under, under this, they're all connected by uh, one, one level of uh, kind of amenity spaces. What is your favorite project? The next one. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that because I'm uh, thinking about the future. Okay. Always. You mentioned it before. Those are the two uh, windows to our uh, other yeah. offices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you so notice, there's a big light there. Yeah. And then there's a big light there. Yeah. So we have... Is it a special... Um, is it a special... Um, it's LED. Light? Yeah. It's a LED yeah. lights. So these are long lasting lights. Yeah, and it's also it's for focus work. Like is it daylight or what, what is it? We like, have a light it seems level. It to be really light. Yeah, like, we have a, a pretty high light level yeah. so that what you're working on the on the desk you uh, you have no trouble seeing. And then just There's interestingly one. enough, we're right here with the WeGrow School. Mm -hmm. um, this opened just a couple of months ago, from concept to completion, nine months. Mm -hmm. Um, all of the furnishings uh, that you see are all bespoke, uh, tailored to the project. No right angles, so it's very influenced by the Montessori uh, education. Yeah. And, and so we, we wanted to create a space that uh, worked at many different levels, from kindergarten to fourth grade, and uh, really kind of also speaks to the, the values of uh, the we community. So uh, there's no meat that is uh, uh, given. Uh, so it's a, it's a vegan it's a diet. Yeah. Uh, they spend one day a week in upstate New York, about uh, 45 minutes away, where they go into the nature. They learn about mm. uh, nature. And um, it's very intimate. So yeah. you know, one, one educator to four or five this students. Is your, this is your favorite project you mentioned? Uh, this is, I would say, a, yeah. a pretty interesting one from an educational standpoint we we are this year finishing a high school a kindergarten and a university project mm -hmm. all within about six months wow. so we haven't had many educational projects before mm -hmm. so this is really our chance to kind of show 
how we as designers and thinkers of space actually think about these uh, educational environments. What do you think about the Montessori um, program? Yeah, idea. I, I like Montessori schools. I, I, I visited, uh, I didn't personally have a Montessori education, but I've visited uh, quite a few. Um, friends of mine have also designed uh, some Montessori schools in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And I, I have to say that, uh, uh, you know, Fröbel, was also a kind of thinker. Mm -hmm. um, I've also visited um, this uh, school in Switzerland outside of Basel that is also about sort of thinking about space. I think, I think kids don't learn about space mm -hmm. in typical uh, kindergartens or education. Mm -hmm. They may get some blocks mm -hmm. and they build walls and things. Mm -hmm. But I, I believe in a Montessori education and in Fröbel and a, a couple of other types, uh, they were very based on spatial kind of learning. Mm -hmm. And being an architect, I really, I, I would have liked to have had that kind of thinking mm -hmm. earlier. So I appreciate what they, what they do. Mm -hmm. No, I, I couldn't agree more. Our yep. kids go to um, Waldorf, which is a similar concept. Yep, They're exactly. But, um, That's the one from Switzerland. Yes, yeah, Waldorf. Yeah, yeah. Let's finish uh, yeah. in the model shop. Uh, I think the model shop is also very much about how we work, how yeah. we think. Yeah. So it's a nice place to kind of uh, to kind of conclude the the visit. Um, so we build all of our models ourselves, and we're building at different scales. So we don't just build a single model for a project. We go through a series of uh, kind of investigations. So it can actually start quite small, just mm -hmm. as a massing model. Mm -hmm. uh, then we can look at like geometries. Then we can look at like solar shading. So this piece here is just a tiny section of that. And then even later, we can go into a construction model where we're actually looking at uh, what type of materials. Can I? Yeah. So this is the Google project that we just saw, but just a small section. And uh, this gives you also a chance to, to look at adjacencies, to look at construction it's of the floors. Things remind me a bit of the WeWork office in, yeah. in New York. Yeah. Well, in WeWork, the staircase is often such an important element. Yeah. And they don't want to just create a staircase to move from one floor to the other. They have little nooks, islands, and little islands. It. So that's also the, what Google has taught us is that people meet and then if they can sit down somewhere, then they have a conversation that's, you know, very, very important to, uh, to everything. So I hope that I've shown it's, you a range it of... It has, uh, I don't know how to put this in words. It's yeah. been so inspiring, like okay. really incredible. Good. I loved it. I hope we didn't steal too much of your time. Not at all. No. Not at all. Um, so it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kai Uwe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs>